Hey, this is Dan from userspice.com and I'm going to show you a couple different ways to install UserSpice. Before I do that, I'm going to tell you that no matter which way you install it, you're probably going to want to make an account over at bugs.userspice.com. Now this is totally optional, but it will allow you to generate an API key which you can copy and then paste into your UserSpice install. All you have to do is take that key and go to settings and general and paste it right here and you will be good to go that your key has been updated. Now once you've done that, that will allow you to go to Spice Shaker and find all kinds of plugins and things like that. It will allow you to go back to the dashboard and check for updates and automatically update your system as well as if you find any bugs, you can fill out a bug report right from the comfort of your own system. I'm going to go ahead and break this video up into different chapters so you can feel free to jump ahead to one that seems relevant to you. One of the easiest ways to get up and running quickly is to use some form of web hosting and almost all web hosting accounts have some kind of one-click software installer and pretty much all one-click software installers have user spice. The most popular ones by far are cPanel which comes with Softaculous. Now this may look different depending on uh, what version of cPanel you're on. So you have some of them you can just come in here and type for the word user and you'll find us right away or sometimes you have to search by category and in that case you would go to frameworks. But once you go in there uh, you can come in and actually just start typing in the word user and we're going to come right up. So once you bring this up uh, you can come over here and just hit the install now button and I'm going to go ahead and just install it in the root directory. I'll leave the existing admin and password but you're most likely going to want to Put your own username and password in there you can set your site name and a couple things like that and then all you do is hit install and once you hit install you'll be given the uh, progress bar I don't really need to tweet about it but it's done and so we can just actually come here to this URL right here and I'm going to use the admin password I think I got that right and we are done now um, what we want to do is we're going to take that API key that I talked about earlier. We're going to come in here to settings and general and paste. And uh, this Softaculous is one version behind. They're usually pretty close to up to speed. But just for demonstration purposes, I'll go ahead and show you that if we hit the dashboard, check for updates, download and install updates, and you are good to go. You have successfully installed and updated user spice on a live server. The next way that people install user spice is to run it on a local Windows, Linux, or Mac machine. And the way you're going to do that, if you don't already have it, you're going to get a program called XAMPP, which you can find at apachefriends.org. And uh, I'm not going to go over installing it. It's pretty straightforward to install. Uh, but you're going to want one of the PHP 8.0 or 8.1 versions of it. And uh, you download it, install it, and make sure it's running. The next thing you'll do is head over to userspice.com and hit that download button to grab the zip file. And then you're going to find the web folder for XAMPP. In my case, that's C colon XAMPP htdocs. And I decided to put the project into a subfolder that allows me to have tons and tons of user spice projects on one machine. So you'll notice that I chose a folder called 545 because we're playing around with user spice 5.4.5. And so I'm going to go in my browser to localhost. 545 five. and you'll see that that immediately brings up the user spice installer and uh, it tells me that I can create a database but on XAMPP you actually don't have to so I'm just going to hit the word continue and I'm going to select my time zone which is New York and I'm going to put in a host of localhost and then we're going to keep the database port at 3306. On XAMPP, the default username is root and there is no password. Uh, so unless you've changed that, go ahead and put that in. But if you have changed it, make sure you put in your current database username and password. And finally, you're going to want to choose a database name. Now again, this is going to be auto-created on XAMPP. So I'm just going to do 545 so it matches the folder that I installed in. And we're going to try these settings and we're going to tell it to go ahead and create it for us. So you can see that it's ready to finalize the install. We're going to hit finalize install and clean up install files. And then we're able to log in with the default username of admin and the default password of password, which you're definitely going to want to change. And you have successfully installed user spice on a local system. I put Raspberry Pi separate because a lot of people look at it like a different type of device. But if you have a Raspberry Pi with a desktop operating system on it, 
then you want to go ahead and use my instructions from the last chapter on using XAMPP. And if you want to install it as a standalone server, then I highly recommend you check out my other video called Diet Pi Install Guide, Creating a Raspberry Pi Server in Minutes. And it will walk you through installing Apache and Node-RED and all that kind of stuff so that you can do all sorts of web server things on a Raspberry Pi. So there you have it. There's a couple different ways to install User Spice. Uh, if you need any more help, we've got the best Discord in the business with about 1,800 people or so over there willing to help with your coding problems, with your installation problems, all that kind of stuff, help you think through your project. And uh, yeah, I appreciate you guys watching. Have a great day.